Well, it's your favourite property show in town in Realty. You're with me, Syed Fadi Noma, in the first segment. Thank you so much for staying with us on Astra One e. Now, if you come to Bukit Bintang, you know it's uh, it's a busy place. It's full of uh, buzz. You can hear construction happening around you. You can hear, you know, things like that, as you can hear all around you. It's because this place is the most happening place in KL. And why is it one of the most uh, happening places in KL? It's because you have a concentration of locals and foreigners making this place really colourful. So where do the foreigners stay? Well, in places like this, Rainforest Bed and Breakfast. Now, we want to find out what exactly is a bed and breakfast. Well, to help me answer my questions, she sat over there. She's the grand madame of uh, Rainforest uh, Bed and Breakfast. Her name is Lini Lin. Uh, we're going to go and find out and uh, from her and we're going to chat with her. Sukma. Grand madame. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, nice Hi. to see you. Uh, thanks for having us. Thank you. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay, uh, we want to talk about bed and breakfast here. Yeah. So what is it exactly? Is it you, I come to you at say quarter to midnight, you give me a bed, I wake up in the morning, you give me breakfast and get out? Yeah, basically like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me how no, it works. Basically, in definition, that's what bed and breakfast is. Okay. Maximum of 10 rooms mm -hmm. run by owners themselves. Mm -hmm. But today, bed and breakfast, it's different now more than 10 rooms basically owners would hire um, a team to run the show and of course with breakfast still well in that sense how is a bed and breakfast different from a hotel or perhaps to, to blur the lines a bit more a small hotel well hotels they provide lots of facilities mm -hmm. from gym rooms swimming pool a conference room a grand ballroom but basically, a bed and breakfast or a guest house, for example, we provide beds, mm -hmm. breakfast, and a minimal of uh, services. The bare necessities. Yeah. Uh -huh. Free Wi-Fi, we have TV for them. Um, of course, we have tours. Basically, different. Right, I yeah. see. So it's a concentrated uh, offering of exactly what a tourist would normally need yes. yeah? and normally it caters for tourists yeah yes definitely okay all right so we've established that bukit bintang is the place to be in line yeah, yeah. Right? um it's the, the especially changkat where you are here this is sort of like the khao san road of kl the khao san road is you know in bangkok yeah the, the backpackers district yeah. in kl this is it yeah uh so how really is business in this area i say business in this area it's actually growing mm -hmm especially bed and breakfast. Mm -hmm. You will see the upcoming bed and breakfast, um, Jana Alor, Tongshin, even Masjid Jamek. Partly why is because of the uh, low-cost airlines mm -hmm. coming in. They've, they've brought in like a new group of uh, demographics. Yeah, the budget tourists, I yes. can imagine. Yeah. Budget uh -huh. travellers. They've introduced them to different countries, so basically, when they travel, they would want to be located at the hub, in the centre. So basically, it will be easier for them to go to, for example, the Twin Towers, mm -hmm. KL Tower, mm -hmm. Independence Square, Chinatown. Yeah. So, right. Uh, in essence, again, uh, it's about being central yeah. uh, and providing the needs to the budget tourists. Basically, the location. The location yeah. is the most uh, attractive factor yeah. of, of such uh, establishments. Uh, when you talk about budget tourists, so clearly budget is a concern. Uh, so what sets you apart from, say, um, off hotels in that sense? Well, basically for these sort of travellers, they would basically want something more affordable. Mm -hmm. So there's definitely our price range for B&B has to be at an affordable price. Mm -hmm. To make sure like it's um, well satisfied, the prices, because if you go to a, um, a five-star hotel or four-star hotel, definitely the prices will be different. Yeah. So basically, prices do play in part of a BNB. Give us an example of when you say prices do come into play. So what are your, your range, uh, price range? Well, we have double room, which is like 115. Mm -hmm. We have twin rooms from 130 to 140. And then we have a family room, 200 mm -hmm. ringgit. And we have dorms as well, which is uh, 39 ringgit per bay. Right, I yeah. see. Okay. 
I travel a lot, uh, and when I, like you said, you know, when I go um, somewhere to travel, I normally find myself in a bed and breakfast or a mm-hmm. guest house. And one of the things I like the most about it is that you, um, you indirectly immerse yourself in the culture because the locals there are actually just regular Joes and, and, and you get to learn something about the culture of the place. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, it is an international community. Uh, so that's one of the most attractive things about the bed and breakfast concept. Uh, what can you say about the people that you have um, day in and day out? Where, where are your customers coming from? And how do they find you? Well, basically, we are on two internet portals, mm-hmm. Hostel Bookers and Hostel World. That's where they find us. Mm-hmm. And we, of course, we have our own internet booking, or they would walk in. Basically, they know that there are a lot of BMBs in mm-hmm. Bukit Bintang. So basically, they will come from the airport, come to Bukit Bintang, and they will come in to each and every BMB. Mm-hmm. They will look at the rooms. If they're happy with it, they will check in with us. Right, I yeah. see. Okay. Uh, but it's also about capturing the customers and also your guests even before they arrive it's so that when they come before they go anywhere else they come here first so how do you do that if they walk in basically that's why we have a different a unique decoration exterior wise so basically it helps to capture their attention mm-hmm. so basically when they come in what we do is we'll make the effort to show them the types of rooms that we have mm-hmm. you no know, we try to show what we have here we'll tell them like uh, we have um, facilities from what 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 mm-hmm. private bathrooms yeah i see okay uh and uh okay let's take a step back and look at it as a, a business and a, a a way to use a property in general um in terms of rental uh, or ownership of space here in the center mm-hmm. is clearly going to be expensive yes. yeah uh, so uh how would you rate uh, a prospective uh, investor who's thinking of okay, let's invest in a property in Bukit Bintang and, and make it a bed and breakfast. How has the experience been for you? Well, there's a difference between like ownership mm-hmm. and operators. Mm-hmm. For example, for operators, they only get to enjoy a minimal profit. Okay. For ownership, for they they tend to enjoy more the value of the property together with the profit so I guess it has a different mm-hmm. definitely different yeah. right it's a uh, but would you say that it's a very expensive venture to go into it is an expensive venture to go into definitely <laughs> okay and what were some of the key considerations before uh, and let's take rainforest as an example before you even thought of doing this what were some of the key considerations the big ticket spending that you had to do maintenance definitely okay explain the building here, it's more like to 20 to 30 years. Mm-hmm. So what we did was, we had to decide, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to fit in this room? Is it going to be a problem for us? Mm-hmm. And how are we going to maintain the building structure later on in the future? Yeah. I see, I see. So those were some of the key considerations. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, well that's, I think that's enough talking about in the business in general. I'm yeah. sure you want to show us this place, but as usual, it's not going to be with me. Lina gets the fun job of going around <laughs> and checking out the place. So for now, uh, Lina, thank you so thank much you for your much. time. Thank you. Uh, well, that's it from me in the first segment. Uh, in the second and third segment, you'll be with Lina. So you want to look at what's going on behind this beautiful antique um, doors that give, madam, I mean, <laughs> uh, behind these doors. Stay with us because Lina's going to take you for a tour after this. So stay with us on In Realty. Rainforest Bed and Breakfast is strategically located in Kuala Lumpur's Golden Triangle with a short distance to anywhere in the city. The most appealing bit about this BNB is that the building itself looks like a mini forest with lush tree and plants just like a hidden gem on the busiest street of KL. Well, Inisu, this is the second floor. Yeah, it's so, a common balcony. Okay. So people commonly hang out here at night yes. or something, yeah? Yeah. All right. Okay, and we are back after a short tour with Lini. We're going to continue after this. Um, so, uh, it's here, Rainforest uh, yes. BNB. Uh, you can feel like uh, fresh air 
even though it's uh, busy yeah. right here by the yeah. street. So talk to us how um, this bed and breakfast, uh, Rainforest Bed and Breakfast is conceptualised. Well, basically, we already had the name Rainforest, uh -huh. so what we wanted to do was to relate our design with the name. Mm. So there we have, uh, we planted trees, basically because we are a tropical country uh -huh. as well. And uh, with the interior design, for example, we wanted to make it as homey as possible mm. for our uh, customers okay. to enjoy and to basically relax while right. staying with us. So how was it before and what have you done to it now? Well, basically, it was really different before. Um, what we did was we revamped the whole place from major renovation, from colours. We wanted to make it um, different compared to other B&Bs. We wanted to make it more unique and basically to have a little bit of a character. Mm -hmm. It was really different from before. Okay, so did you do a lot of uh, renovation work? Uh, yeah, a lot. Did yeah. you put put down any walls or something? No, no. no. It's just uh, the, the space and the layout basically is still the same. Um, basically, just the renovation part. Uh -huh. yeah, and the decoration. Uh, how do you come up with this color scheme? Uh, red and you know like brown. Was it like this before as well? No, it wasn't. Okay, it was just plain color. Mm. Um, the colors and all. We wanted something more shocking. Um, Something that if you walk past, for example, you can oh wow, you can yeah, exactly. like have a look at the building from colors. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to us about the rooms now. Okay, the rooms we basically have uh, seven types of rooms from dorms, uh, double rooms mm -hmm. for single travelers, and we have twin rooms as well for couples, partners, and for family as well. Um, what are the things that you consider? Uh, that you know, okay, this is the room we're going to have here and this is how it's going to look like. Obviously, because uh, of the space constraint, you can't really do much with that much of a space. So what are the key considerations before you said, okay, this is going to work for the rooms? Well, basically, we didn't, um, we didn't have any consideration at first. What we just wanted was um, a proper space to fit in mm -hmm. a bed, a TV and with a private bathroom. So. Basically, if you see, each type of rooms, we have different types of design. Wooden, um, from tile fro floorings and everything. So we wanted it to be different, but we didn't actually come up with a, a quick design <laughs> for the hotel. Uh, we just basically decided what best suited for, for the hotel, okay. the rooms especially. So yeah. hence you are playing it safe yeah. when it comes to yeah. this kind of recreation. Yeah. Uh, when we go downstairs on the, gr on the ground level, so uh, there are the reception counter and also the living area. Yeah. So uh, how do you, uh, you know, cater the, the, the space layout uh, that suits your business? Definitely we need a reception, mm. but for the living space, um, this is where we have our breakfast because we're a B&B. And for the living, basically, we just wanted it uh, a space like when you come back from work or for our customers, when they go out and when they come back, they just want to hang out. Like, they just want to hang out at a home. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's why we have a living area. We, we needed to put a space for living area mm -hmm. and for dining as well for our customers. Mm -hmm. And besides that, what are the other common areas that you can find here? Uh, this one would be the courtyard, right? Yeah. Is it? Um, this will be our. This is our common area okay, as common well. Area, okay. Yeah. And um, we have the third floor living area as well, and we have the kitchenette mm. as well for our customers. Okay. So um, when you say that it's a bed and breakfast, you know, right in the city. So what would you say? Uh, the one thing that sells when it comes to rainforest bed, bed and breakfast. What would be the main attraction here? I think it would be the exterior design <laughs> of the building. Yeah. yeah. And how did that come about, the exterior design? The, the exterior was already like that, but what we wanted, we wanted more. Okay. We were basically, we wanted like, oh, we wanted more plants, we wanted more colours. Mm. We, we just basically wanted, to, we went crazy in the beginning, <laughs> yeah. With our main door, uh, it's an antique door. Yeah. So basically, we wanted to put something cultural mm. for our customers. Something for them to remember once they leave. Yeah, yeah. And this place has a blend of, um, you know, rainforest and also oriental. Yeah. So it's a mix of that. Yeah. Um, and when you have this uh, B and B, it's already 
uh, existingly that way and you didn't do nothing much to change that. Uh, so what would you feel, uh, how is it that you feel that this is going to work? Well basically, um, for our travellers, they love history, they, love, they want to know something a little bit from our ancient history. So basically that's what we brought in a little bit of um, Asian design, um, a touch of it for them. And basically, they would um, appreciate it. Yeah. And, and how do you source uh, for your furniture and for your decor? We, we basically went around um, to antique stores to look what's best suited for our hotel. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, would you say that would be a challenge uh, when making this a success as it is now? In the beginning, it was a challenge for us. Until today, it is as well. Because <laughs> right now, today, we have to face our customers. Actually, okay, um, in your scenario, it's a different thing because um, you, this, this place belongs to somebody else before and you took over. And obviously, it's not as simple as it seemed, you know, uh, having a makeover. So what would you say the biggest challenge in making this uh, happening? Um, I guess in this business, we had different sort of challenges. In the beginning, we face the renovation part. Uh -huh. How are we going to make it unique yeah. for to do this business? How are we going to sell the room? We needed a unique selling point at that time. So basically, we had to go from the design, the cost and everything in the beginning. And then once it all start up, it all comes down to our marketing as well. So basically, that was a challenge as well for us. So basically, what we did was we we are selling a couple of rooms in in, in the internet. We have like two internet portals and stuff like that. So that was one of our challenges. And right now, basically, to maintain the building is one of the challenges as well because this building is like basically 20, 30 years old already. So we still have a little bit of minor maintenance problems that we always need to keep on for a lookout every day. And, and being right smack uh, on the street of a busy street is yeah. also, uh, can sometimes pose inconvenience in terms of maintenance, right? Yeah. Okay, and uh, how do you go about that? Yeah, we, we do have a group of team where they have a basic of um, maintenance. Basically, they will know what to do when there's a situation that we can't handle. All right, uh, thanks, uh, Lini. I'm um, that's all the time we have for this segment. Thank you. Well, um, there you go. If you like to have a quick escapade, um, you know, having the rainforest feel in the middle of the city, come on over to Rainforest Bed and Breakfast over in Jalan Mesui. Uh, look for Lini if you like. So with that, I see you again on the next segment. Okay, and we are back. Uh, this time, my favorite segment because I'm going to take you shopping. Uh, I'm here right now in Massimo over in Mont Chiara, and with me today is Henry Ng. He's the owner of Massimo. Thank you so much, Henry, for having us. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> by. <laughs> okay, so uh, let us start with how Massimo started. How did it all begin for Massimo? It started in 05. That's where uh, our first showroom started uh -huh. in Singapore. I was actually working for someone else and uh, decided that uh, that's not my calling. So decided to start a furniture shop uh -huh. and I uh, realised that in Singapore people being very home proud um, I targeted because I mean I, I couldn't get a shop that's so big so we needed to focus mm -hmm. so my first group of products was actually just sofas okay. and that was how Massimo started just on sofas uh -huh. the outdoor furniture or the weaker furniture came uh, a bit later only in 2009 mm -hmm. so that is briefly how, how we got started and then 2005 in Singapore and now 2013 uh, you are in, in, KL. in KL why is that why, why does it take so much time <laughs> for you to get here <laughs> uh, because we were we were still trying to get the right mix and uh, Singapore is not an easy uh, market as well. Okay. There are a lot of furniture uh, uh, guys out there so we were just trying to find our own position uh -huh. in Singapore and we feel that we are comfortable now mm. to give it a shot in KL. Okay, and your choice of location, I mean you can mm. opt for um, you know, areas uh, like in the shopping mall or over in Bangsa where the um, you know, uh, furniture centre is but you right. decided to have it here over in uh, Mount Chiara. 
uh, we find Mount Kiara quite unique mm. because it is surrounded by about 60 uh, mid to high-end condos. Mm -hmm. So that gives us a very good catchment area. Mm -hmm. And we're not too far away from Bangsa and Damansara either, mm -hmm. about 15-20 minutes drive. So we feel that it's quite a good location to start. Okay. Um, instead of a shopping centre, right. we decided to try something new. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and accessibility wise is good, you know, parking is abundance, it's parking easy to, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And mm. uh, it's quite a lifestyle area here, you've yeah. got fast food, you've got banks, mm. so we thought we'd give you a try here. And, and that would be the kind of person that you're targeting, you know, the people who live in the condominiums? Yes, as What's well your as uh, landed, uh, more like people who are looking for uh, design conscious, okay. uh, but uh, looking for value proposition. They do not want to spend too much. They are willing to spend, but mm. uh, they want to get value in return. But they don't want to overspend, you know, uh, like 50000 60000 on a sofa. Mm. Typically, you can get a good sofa here for about six to $10,000. Mm. So these are the people that we're targeting, the design conscious, uh, looking for good value. Mm. So it is possible to have good value and good design all in one. <laughs> it is uh, almost possible here. Okay, so talk, <laughs> to, us, here. talk to us about uh, the kind of furniture that you have. Uh, talk to us about the design and, and the style of your sofas. The designs that we have selected for Massimo is mainly, uh, I would say, generally modern contemporary. Mm -hmm. But they are one important part is that we choose only furniture that are understated in okay. design. They are, they are quite uh, quiet, mm -hmm. uh, they clean are not lines. overly funky, uh, clean lines. Mm -hmm. So the look that will last uh, years to come, mm -hmm. it will not fade. So these are mainly our criteria for choosing uh, what designs we showcase in the showroom. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. you have all sorts of uh, materials. You have the fabrics, yes. you have the leather. Yes, that's right. Uh, would I be able to customize my own yes. sofa? Exact How do I go about that? That, that, that is exactly uh, the selling point of of okay. Massimo, actually. We allow you to customize. Mm -hmm. So not only do we do fabric, we do leather as well. Um, and you can decide on the choice of fabrics that you want. We have uh, about five to six hundred choices of fabric. Mm -hmm. um, if you do not want genuine leather, we also have uh, synthetic leather. Mm -hmm. And the sofas do come in modules, so okay. you can arrange to form any configuration that you want. Mm -hmm. But if that fails, we can con we can further customize for you. Mm. So if I were to come here, like I live in like a, almost a, a pigeon hole. It's small. Uh, because that's the only place I could afford. Uh, <laughs> and I am uh, perpetually looking for good sofas um, with just the right size, just the right build for my mm -hmm. small living room. So when I got into Massimo, I can see everything is huge. So would I be able to minimize the size of the sofa that I like here? Would yes, that yes. be possible? Yes, a perfect example is the sofa that we're sitting on okay. now. This is Totalini. Uh, Totalini is one of our best sellers, mm -hmm. uh, at least in Singapore. And this uh, sofa here is about 2.3 meters long, okay. but uh, on the adjacent side, mm -hmm. the black Totalini there has been customized to be a two-seater. Oh, it's the same? So it's actually the same collection, uh -huh. uh, as well as the armchair here. Uh -huh. This is uh, two individual armchairs. Oh, all right. Um, so here you can see that the sofas actually can come in various sizes okay. for different needs. But let's say, for example, Totalini uh, over there is still too big, mm -hmm. or you want it a little bit bigger, we can customize further. Okay. So this is done in fabric, that is done in synthetic leather, but we could very well do it in genuine leather also. Alright, that's mm. good news. So, yeah. yeah, and then you uh, put in your outdoor furniture. Yes. Yeah, that is also your niche, right? But we started outdoor furniture mm. in our, around 2009, uh, because the balconies in Singapore were getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> and uh, people needed furniture to furnish up their balconies as uh -huh. well. So the whole alfresco lifestyle. Mm. So we decided to bring it over to um, KL as well mm. because of the condo population in Mount Kiara. Mm. We noticed there's a lot of condos with balconies here. Yeah, so these also. are perfect for... And the balcony has become an extension of the living room. Exactly. So uh, if you have a very nice sofa mm. in your living room, you do not want to hang clothes in your balcony. Exactly. So we thought of bringing this nice outdoor furniture to complement mm. your living room. Yeah, and it's hard to tell whether it's an outdoor furniture or indoor furniture because yeah. the outdoor furniture looks as cosy and as appealing as your indoor right. furniture. Right, right. Uh, the quality uh, of the weaving does count, mm. so um, our outdoor furnitures are, are woven uh, by master craftsmen in, mm. in, in Java. So, uh, 
And the style of the furniture of the outdoor is also chosen to complement our sofas. Alright. So, so we will go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah so you, you are quite a newbie here in KL. Very new. <laughs> so <laughs> what would old. your uh, future plans would be that we can anticipate from? Hopefully just to uh, get this shop going, mm. uh, to get the word around that people know us uh, mm. and they come to visit us. Mm. That will be the first step, just to showcase what we can do. Um, and, and see what goes from there. Alright, thank you yeah. so much Henry for your time. Thank you. Well, um, there you go. If you are looking for the perfect kind of sofa, come on over to Massimo in Mont Chiara and I'm sure you can get the kind of sofa that you like. So with that, i see you again next week on In Realty.